With the unveiling of Saudi Arabia's 2030 vision, the country's rolling up its sleeves for some serious renovation. In 2011, flash floods destroyed 90% of roads and 27,000 buildings in Jeddah. Combined with Saudi's population quadrupling over the past four decades, there's a serious demand for housing all over the country, with officials estimating that 900 homes are needed a day to meet the demand. But that's just a micro-issue here. The Arabian Peninsula has largely made its income from oil, like its regional competitor UAE, which diversified its revenue from oil to other portfolios like tourism. It's time for Saudi Arabia to do the same. And it's doing just that with larger-than-life products like Kiria, Neom, Red Sea, Amala, and much more. The country is aiming to be the business and tourist hub of the world. To achieve this, Saudi Arabia will be spending a staggering amount of $400 billion on infrastructure over the next few years. To symbolize this revolution and growth, it's building the tallest skyscraper in the world, the Jeddah Tower. This technically means that the Burj Khalif will no longer be the tallest skyscraper, a position that has held for 14 years. The Jeddah Tower is widely reported to have a height of 1 kilometer, 180 meters more than Burj Khalifa. After five years of inactivity, construction on this mega project has resumed on September 2023. So, why was this project abandoned in the first place, and why is it being resumed now? What's changed? Before answering these questions, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to Visionary Builds to keep you updated on the mega builds from around the world. Let's get back to the topic. Interestingly, the Jeddah Tower was originally supposed to be one mile high. However, when the soil of the proposed site was tested, there were doubts about whether it could support such a length. Consequently, the project was scaled down by 500 meters. Construction began in April of 2013, and the piling work was completed by the end of that year. The designer behind the Jeddah Tower is Adrian Smith, who also designed the Burj Khalifa and is now set to break his own record. He won the gig in 2010 during a competition between eight leading architectural firms from around the world. Smith's portfolio boasts four of the tallest buildings in the world, including Trump Tower in Chicago, Jin Mao Tower, and Pearl River Tower, both of which are in China. Adrian's design for the Jeddah Tower is intended to look like a desert plant shooting upwards, symbolic of Saudi Arabia's growth. The company behind the Jeddah Tower, Kingdom Holding, is headed by the Saudi prince Al Walid bin Talal, who owns 33% of the tower. In 2011, Kingdom Holding awarded a $1.23 billion contract to the local company, bin Laden as the main construction contractor. This cost is surprisingly lower than that of Burj Khalifa, which cost around $1.5 billion. So how can a building that's taller than Burj Khalifa cost less? Labor costs in Saudi Arabia are cheaper and construction costs have also declined after the global financial crisis of 2007-2008. Moreover, three shifts will work round the clock to expedite the process. With this speed, the tower was hoped to be opened by 2020, but that wasn't the case. Trouble started in 2017 when the owner of Kingdom Holding, Al Walid, and the chairman of the Bin Laden group were arrested. This was due to a massive crackdown initiated by the government that resulted in the widespread arrests of princes, ministers, and businessmen. Their arrest didn't completely stop the construction, and by the end of 2017, 60 floors of the tower were complete, with the overall height reaching 827 feet. In 2018, structural work was officially halted due to labor issues with a contractor. It also didn't help that the COVID-19 pandemic started just a year afterward, leaving only a third of the tower complete. However, after a five-year pause, the project's back on its feet with major media outlets reporting the news. Due to issues with the previous contractor, a new construction company is required to complete the one-kilometer tall tower. Fourteen construction teams from the Middle East, Europe, and China have been given three months to prepare their bids. So hopefully, a contract will be selected by the end of the year. Let's talk about the features of this ambitious project. The Jeddah Tower is literally and metaphorically the centerpiece of a much larger project the Jeddah Economic City. The tower will occupy a 120-acre area along with surrounding buildings. Jeddah Tower, being a multi-use faculty, will host a Four Seasons Hotel, rental apartments, office spaces, and luxury condominiums. It's important to note that, like all skyscrapers, the very top of the tower is unhabitable and is only there to increase its length. Hence, all floors above 167 are made of steel and only contribute to an empty spire. Given the tower's extreme height, it'll also have the highest observation deck in the world. The 57-acre area around the tower will feature public spaces including shopping malls, residential units, restaurants, cafes, public parks, and much more. But that's not the best part yet. 
The city will also feature a man-made waterfront over 970,000 square feet, surrounded by pedestrian walkways, amphitheaters, shops, and much more. One other reason for building a skyscraper, other than it being a tourist attraction, is that it greatly increases the value of the economic surroundings. Talal al Maiman, a board member of the Jeddah Economic Company, said Jeddah Tower will be a landmark structure that will greatly increase the value of hundreds of other properties around its Jeddah Economic City and throughout North Jeddah. This concept is demonstrated with Burj Khalifa, where its surrounding malls and hotels made the most revenue, while Burj Khalifa made little or no profit. Although there's no official number stated, it's claimed that the Jeddah Tower will have 200 floors. The observation deck or sky terrace will be built on the 157th floor, giving a commanding view of the city and the Red Sea. At a height of 2100 feet, it would have a diameter of around 500 square feet. For comparison, the tallest observatory deck is in Shanghai Tower, sitting at a height of 2,073 feet on the 118th floor. But building the tallest skyscraper in the world isn't a piece of cake, and while you can draw what you want on paper, in reality, you can't ignore the laws of physics. So, for a tower like Jeddah aiming to be the highest in the world, the primary focus for the engineers is stability. Computer modeling programs indicated that the most stable foundation would be triangular shaped. This gives the tower a Y-shaped structure while its exterior would be made entirely of glass. The foundation is around 15 feet and the weight of the building is expected to be 900,000 tons. As the bedrock of the proposed location was soft, a metal framework would be used to support the building. 18 million cubic feet of concrete and 80,000 tons of steel would be used to install piles 660 feet deep. The next problem is the wind pressure. To solve this, the facade structure is made smooth and slow. This form gives better aerodynamic performance than the step design found in Burj Khalifa. The wind pressure gets stronger as you go up. High strength concrete would be used to construct the core to prevent the tower from swaying on windy days. Mobility in a tall skyscraper is another critical aspect of the design. For this purpose, the Jeddah Tower will use 12 escalators and 59 elevators, five of them being double decked. These custom elevators will run at a top speed of 22 miles an hour to transport passengers quickly as there are several floors in the building. They can't run at a faster speed as the rapid change in air pressure would cause nausea to its passengers. Moreover, no elevator would go from the ground to the top floor, so people living on the top floors would have to exchange their elevator on an intermediate floor known as the Sky Lobby. There will be a total of three Sky Lobbies so that no elevator gets overburdened. The Jeddah Tower also offers residential space for those willing to immerse themselves in a lavish experience. There would be 500 well-planned units divided into four tiers. Tier 1 and 2 apartments have lesser facilities relative to Tier 3 and 4, which are located at higher floors, offering a spectacular view of the city. Residents of the fourth tier will have access to a private entrance as well. But that's not all. As Saudi Arabia is targeting entrepreneurs, investors, and tourists from all over the world, the Jeddah Tower will serve as their mainstay, with plans for expanding the new King Abdulaziz International Airport for a whopping $31 billion. The airport would have a capacity of 114 million passengers annually. This will turn Jeddah into the business and commercial that it's always wanted to be. To accommodate the influx of foreign travelers, the Jeddah Tower is partnered with the Four Seasons Hotel. The hotel consists of 200 rooms and 121 luxury apartments, along with executive meeting rooms, shopping stores, halls for hosting events, and top-notch restaurants. Regarding the completion, there's no official date mentioned on their website, so one can expect the project to be operational by the end of this decade. While this is great news for many, critics believe that the obsession with competing for the tallest skyscrapers should end, especially as the tower is mostly catered toward the Arab elite and rich foreigners. Opponents believe that this money should rather be spent on education and research as the Arab countries are suffering from poor education levels. With Dubai at risk of losing the title of the tallest skyscraper in a matter of a few years, they're adding another tower to their list, Dubai Creek Tower. While the tower won't be taller than the Jeddah Tower or even Burj Khalifa, it does show the UAE's desperation to stay on top of the game. Will the Jeddah Tower be a full stop for the skyscraper industry? Of course not. It's possible that a new country is already planning to build the next tallest structure, just like Saudi Arabia did. But the question is, how tall can we build? Experts believe that a 6,500-foot structure almost twice the height of the Jeddah Tower is possible but won't be practical. It's because after a certain height, a skyscraper is no longer habitable and only hosts support machinery. However, even if a 6,500-footer was practically and economically feasible, 
Very few countries would dare to step into this venture given the astronomical resources required to build such a giant. Should countries drop the skyscraper competition and instead focus on affordable housing for the public? Comment below! If you liked today's video, hit the like button and also turn on the notifications to never miss an update. We'll be making an update video in the future once the Jedi Tower is ready.